The Dyslexia Centre and Grove FM is vital for the children at Lindhurst. It anchors them and it's a nurturing environment from the top down. When I came to Lindhurst in 2002, I was determined to improve provision for dyslexia in Southwark. With local authority support and through employing some extremely talented people, that's been achieved. Grove FM was an integral part of that process. Sadly, with ongoing cuts, the Dyslexia Centre and Grove FM could disappear. We're looking to raise 90k to keep Grove FM going for another three years while we look at all other options to enable our Dyslexia Centre to remain open. If you can help, I'd be extremely grateful. Hello, I'm Ruth Pearce. I'm the Specialist Dyslexia Teacher here at Lindhurst Dyslexia Centre. Um, I work with children on a one-to-one -one basis who either have a diagnosis of dyslexia or have a significant literacy difficulty. Grove FM was first set up as a radio station to support dyslexic children, where it gives them a space to speak and be heard uh, without having to write anything down. From that over the years, it's grown to include children throughout the school. And today we run a weekly podcast. This gives the children an opportunity to reflect on their learning. It also gives the teachers a way of listening back to see if there's any gaps in their learning that they can address. We also run a very popular radio club. And we use new media and technology such as green screen, drone filming, animation, filmmaking and editing on top of recording, making and editing their own music. We regularly submit the work that they create to local and national competitions and have been recognised with several awards throughout the year. We are working on, on meat-free Mondays and, and vegetables. We use stop motion animation to create, to create the video and give the whole video its qualities. I think Lots of children will enjoy Radio Club because it, it's, it helps socialise and it's really fun, it has really fun activities to do. It, it also, you do lots of like fun things like animating and music. We've always known that speaking and listening is really important to literacy development and it's common within the profession to know that if you can't say it, then you can't write it. We do um, kind of different stuff and it's real fun. Some class teachers would go like, oh, they've got that bit and they've got that bit, but oh, none of them talked about this. And so it was a way of coming back and making sure any gaps in, in their learning uh, could be reinforced. We made this film about, um, well, someone's bullying um, a girl called Hannah. And in the end, they go to a zoo and there's a lion and it breaks out of a cage. And then she tames the lion and everyone is our friends. We had one parent who wrote a little note saying that, that one of our children's granddads in Kazakhstan listened to it and he had the whole village in there and every time his grandson spoke he was like Whoa! I help them to learn to read and also to spell but also I do a lot of work on organisational skills. The biggest thing is confidence. Our aim is to give children a space where they can fulfil their ideas so that the majority of the content is planned and made by them with our kind of technical help. All of us here at the Lindhurst Dyslexic Centre and at Grave FM want to continue working with children. Alan Oldberg's poem, Picking Teams, highlights the problem of social exclusion for some pupils. At Lindhurst, as well as supporting children's difficulties, we also find out what they're good at and give them the opportunity to succeed and consequently improve their self-esteem. Through Grove FM, we've discovered a lot of potential broadcasters and performers who in other settings could pass unnoticed. We don't want anyone to feel like the child in Alberg's poem. <laughs>